In this lesson, I'll show you how to sketch a function using methods of calculus. This is question two. The question reads, find the intercepts, maximum, minimum, inflection points, and then use all these properties to make a graph of the equation y is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 8 times x to the power of 2. Now this question is very involved. There's a lot of work, so make sure that you have enough space to work along with me. The easiest of all these properties is the intercepts. And we'll start with the y-intercept. All that involves is setting x is equal to 0. So I'll write that down. My first step, the y-intercept, set x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 to the power of 4 minus 8 times 0, our answer is 0. So our first point that we can plot for this graph is 0 and 0. The next property is to find the x-intercepts. And we can do that by setting y is equal to 0. So let's set y is equal to 0 and see if we can solve for x. 0 is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 8x to the power of 2. Notice that these two terms are common factorable. So I'm going to factor out x squared. This gives me x squared minus 8. That's equal to 0. Because we have two factors now, we can set both of these factors equal to 0 and solve for them from there. So we have x squared is equal to 0, and we have x squared minus 8 is equal to 0. Solving for x here, there's only one solution, and that's 0. And of course, we set y is equal to 0, so the y-coordinate will be 0. And over here, we need to solve a little bit more. We bring the 8 over, that becomes positive 8. So x is equal to the square root of 8. Now, square rooting a positive number will give us two outputs. 2.83, I'll just round up. So we have x is equal to positive minus 2.83. Therefore, we have two more points to plot. 2.83 and 0, and negative 2.83 and 0. So far, we have four points, which is pretty good. Here's where it starts to get hard. We need to find the maximum, minimum, and inflection points. And to do that, that involves finding the derivative. We'll start with the maximum and minimum. To do this, we need to use the second derivative test, which involves first finding the first derivative and finding its critical values. Once you have found their critical values, you find the second derivative and input those critical values that you just found into the second derivative. If your output for the second derivative is plus, that's a local minimum. If your output is negative, that's a local maximum. In case you're unfamiliar with all that, let's do this together. So step number three, local, max, and min. Our function was y is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 8x squared. Let me rewrite that. And I'll use the power rule for both of these terms. So y prime, which represents my derivative, is 4x to the power of 3 minus 16x. I'm going to set this equal to 0. 0 is equal to 4x cubed minus 16x. It appears like I can factor this out. So I can factor out an x and a 4. And the rest is x to the power of 2 minus 4. And remember the 0. So now that we have two factors, I can set 4x is equal to 0. Solving for x here, I end up with 0. It's a good start. Now remember, this is one of the critical points. So I'm going to be substituting this into y double prime, our second derivative, which we haven't found yet. Let's focus on this factor. x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. That is a difference of squares. This is a perfect square, and so is this. So we can write it as x plus 2, x minus 2. And therefore, x is equal to plus minus 2. Like I said earlier, I'm going to substitute these critical points. And I'll label them critical points so that you don't forget. Into y double prime. So I have to find y double prime now by taking the derivative of the first derivative. y double prime is equal to 
12x to the power of 2 minus 16. And I'm going to set 0 into this function, and that will give me negative 16. It's a negative number. This means that it's a local maximum. Local max at x is equal to 0. We'll find the y-coordinate soon. Let's see what happens when we substitute these values into there. y double prime, 12 times 2, positive 2 minus 16. That's 4 times 12 minus 16. That should give us a positive number. And if I substitute negative into here, I'll get another positive number. Let me just show you. Therefore, there will be a local maximum at x is equal to 0, a local min at x is equal to 2, and another local minimum at x is equal to negative 2. Let me just highlight these. I don't want to lose track. Because what I have to do next is find the y-coordinates for these three. So I'll have to substitute these values into my original function. And let's see if we can do that without any calculator. 0 to the power of 4 minus 8 times 0. That's 0. So we have another point at 0 and 0. Let's substitute 2. I'll use my calculator for this. 2 to the power of 4 minus 8 times 2 to the power of 2. That gives me negative 16. So my local minimum will be at 2 and negative 16. And lastly, if I substitute negative 2 into here, I'll end up with negative 2 and negative 16. And you can confirm that using your calculator. I'm going to highlight this with yellow just to keep track of my major points. Now that we've covered the maximum and minimum, the last property is the inflection points. And to find the inflection points, we'll need the second derivative. The second derivative, if you recall, was equal to y double prime 12x squared minus 16. What we have to do is set the second derivative equal to 0. Find its critical points, and then find out what happens before that critical point, in between that critical point, and after that critical point. So we'll set y double prime is equal to 0. 0 is equal to 12x squared minus 16. Bringing that 16 over makes it positive. 16 divided by 12 is equal to x squared. And we'll square root both sides, giving us the square root of 16 over 12 is 1.15. So x is equal to plus minus 1.15. Let's create a chart to see what happens before and after this inflection point. When x is less than negative 1.15, when x is between negative 1.15 and positive 1.15, and when x is greater than 1.15. So let's find values, any random value that fits these restrictions, and substitute them back into y double prime and see what happens. Let's choose negative 2. 12 times negative 2 to the power of 2 minus 16. That gives us a positive number. Let's choose 0 here, gives us a negative number. And let's choose a very large positive number that gives us another positive. The inflection points tell us when the curve is going from concave up to concave down and vice versa. So before negative 1.15, since it's positive, it was concave up. And then here it's negative, it's concave down. And here it's positive. So concave up. Now we need to find the points of inflection. These are only the x coordinates. So what I have to do is substitute positive negative 1.15 into my original equation. And if you forgot what that was, it's right here. y is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 8x to the power of 2. Let's substitute negative 1.15 into here to the power of 4 minus 8 negative 1.15. That gives us 8.83. I'm 
So we have a point of inflection at negative 1.15 and negative 8.83. And if you substitute positive 1.15, you'll get the same y coordinate. So positive 1.15 and negative 8.83. I'm going to highlight this because it's important. And now we can start sketching. Since this is just a sketch, I'm not going to be entirely accurate. We'll start with step one. What we discovered here was y-intercept at 0 and 0 and 3x-intercepts 0 and 0 and 2.83 plus minus. So this is my y-intercept. It's also one of my x-intercepts. This is one of my x-intercepts which is at negative 2.83 and 0. And we have another one. In step three, we found the local maximum and minimum, and they happen to be these points. We had one at two and negative 16. Let's call this two and negative 16, and negative two and negative 16. We also had one at zero and zero, so keep that in mind. All right, in step four, we learned about the inflection points. So there's an inflection point at negative 1.15 and negative 8.83. Negative 1.15 is over here, and negative 8.83 is roughly halfway. We have another one over here. So between negative 1.15 and positive 1.15, it's going down. After positive 1.15, it's going up. Before negative 1.15, it's also going up. This represents a rough sketch of the function y is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 8x squared. And that is how you sketch a function using calculus.